All right, I'll do it for him. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Gotta be honest and upfront here, a little frustrated with this guy. He, I, we, right after that last shot, was trying to take the mount for the motion light, or the, not the motion light, the touch light, where you touch the tip and the light comes on. We were trying to take that off the wall with our Leatherman. Like a schmuck, we were also pressing our thumb into the release on the Leatherman, and we ended up slicing into our thumb. Right now is days later. The camera was rolling. Sorry, it was dripping into the back of my throat. The camera was rolling and did fall dramatically as the slice was happening. After bandaging up the thumb, thought it'd be a good idea to then roll the camera with the bandage on the thumb and a brand new fixed blade knife and pry the light mount off. It was a great way to actually segue the video from the silence and just ambiance into the talking. Well, in true we live in a digital age fashion, somehow those specific clips got deleted and I have looked high and low in this guy's folders, deleted, recently deleted, trash can, recycling bin, all that stuff, they simply do not exist. How in the world the clips before and after survived is beyond me. Anyway, now here I am picking up the pieces, explaining this to you lovely people, so that he can get on with what he was doing and I can focus on what I'm doing, which is rebuilding this van, editing the video footage, and trying to find time to brush my teeth. All right, back to the show. Okay, so I'm gonna start building the box here for the, basically it's going to house the diesel heater, uh, house the diesel heater ducting, which as I mentioned before, is gonna run this way. And then up here, it's gonna be the platform for the fridge. Now, I thought I was gonna get a smaller fridge, but I think I'm really in love with that uh, EcoFlow Glacier and through my friends over at Craze Outdoors, I might be able to get a good deal on one. So it's about the same size as the set power fridge that I have. So we'll just be using that sort of as the dimensions. Um, I think the set power is the tiniest bit bigger. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Um, the bigger concern I'm having, and one reason I sort of started this morning down by the river and just thinking about things, and now I'm drawing things out, is this can't just be a regular box because I don't want it to be impossible to get to the diesel heater. I want to have a hinged lid and every other thing, but I don't want things to be out of whack and this, that, and the other thing. It's a lot to think about, but we're just going to go ahead and, and do it and... I'll explain as much as I can as I go. Not sure how far we'll get today. First things first though, this little support beam here that I put in, <laughs> um, it's just secured down there at the bottom. I gotta get that out of there. Hopefully it's not too bad. There is construction adhesive on that back seam I can see. That was helpful in the previous build, but in this one, it's just gonna be in the way. So we gotta get it out of there. I'm hoping just these two screws, my goodness. I clearly didn't want that to go anywhere, my gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hammer at that, methinks, with the crowbar. Give me a second. There, that's another reason I put it there, I remember. It was sort of covering up the spray foam in that crack, but no, it's fine. What we are about to build, we'll cover it up as well. I've misplaced my vacuum. your finger can't find a vacuum that's the kind of day where you just go back to bed 
or you put it in your boat when you're painting your van. So, got the DC to DC charger wires out of the way. Just a little zip tie mount, those little plastic things. You feed the zip ties through and then wrap them around. I only have two on hand. I don't know where the rest of them went. I looked in my little junk drawer, but or my little, you know, little drawer I've been putting everything in. But that's okay. If we need to later, I'll pick some up and we'll reinforce this. But for now, I just wanted the wires up out of the way. We will need some more on this side, sort of to get them out and up. And so many wires but that's essentially how that's gonna go we're gonna loom this part i don't know why but when I, it's fine the insulation from the wire will protect everything no problem and it obviously has the, the spray paint from this thing is rubbed off onto the power wire a bit but i have the loom i'm here i may as well so now that that's out of the way we got our shore power line coming in oh this is another thing we're gonna have to gosh darn it okay well that can live there i could just zip tie that to that okay all right time to think and see. Oh, and do some measurements. Book, tape measure, pencil, and now this little box we're going to build, I don't want it to be any higher than the top of the fuel filler door, right? That's way we're maximizing the most amount of space. So that looks like it's about eight and a half, just under. So maybe we'll just play it safe and go nine. That's not a huge sacrifice. So this box needs to be nine inches tall. So let's write nine right here. And then it needs to come out this way, 18 inches. And then this 28 is just the platform for the fridge. But the entire length of this darn thing is going to be, don't be jerk. I need more tape measure. My kingdom for more tape measure. Oh, we could just go. 55 and call it even. 55. There you go. That's more or less what we have to do. All right, loom is always a pain in the ass, but I got on the section that I wanted. I might be able to use one of the clamps that I have that I took uh, that was up here and attach it here just to sort of cinch all this down. Maybe we'll do the same back here. And I clearly aggravated my wounds a bit. So when I start sewing, I think I'll probably have to wear a glove because there we go. Got that one right into an actual stud that's behind the wall. So that's not going anywhere. And then just to make sure this is a little bit more stable, we'll put one more on this side. Curse. This one's not going to have a stud to go into. So it's going to be a little bit more loosey goosey, but that's okay. There. Eh. This gives all that a little bit more stability. And now it's not going anywhere. Look how neat and tidy that looks. <sighs> Ridiculous. There's like four, three or four band-aids on here too. Unbelievable. I don't have time for this. We got a van to build. This is a future math problem. <laughs> There, but one more here. So now we got a lot of stability across the whole length of the wire. We got our shore power plug in here as well. I just got to remember, and this is what's nice about doing the build this way this time, is as I'm building this box, keep easy access to this area if this has to be replaced. Just zip that out, pull it out, replace it with a new one. I've already had to do that once, so that's why I'm like concerned about it. Just don't want it to be impossible to get to. And then we're going to run an extension cord from here to inside the power box to a power bar probably and then or maybe we'll find a different place for the power bar maybe we can go up here and the battery charger wire can come out here that's stay focused i think i'm going to start with <laughs> well first of all i'm going to have to clean off my table because i've got nowhere to do any sort of sawing right now but my thought is that the front piece of wood that will be our nine inches by what did i say 55 i'll double check the book i'm pretty sure that's what it was so that front piece of wood, I'm gonna use this three quarter inch plywood that was part of the old bed platform. Cause we got a nice hefty front plate that we will also paint white. And that way it's a nice sturdy front because what I have to do is instead of having, let me see if I can explain this. So we're still gonna frame it with two by two, right? But because I wanna have a hinged lid, 
I don't want to have the two by two flush with the three quarter inch. I don't want it to sit a little bit lower, either three quarter inch or half inch, and the lid will sit on here. You know what I mean? So then we've created a nice flush platform that also includes this front piece. This is going to be one of the more complicated things I've ever built, I think. It's not going to be anything crazy, but it just takes a little bit more thought uh, at the outset here. So that being said, we will start by cutting that front piece, and then we're probably going to have to go to Silverton Building Supplies. I don't have any more white paint. I was there yesterday. I should have bought some. I didn't think this is what I was going to be doing today. Oh, yeah, yes, 55. That's about there. We use the ruler that we found. Now it's really like the lucky 1.0 build. Give me a nice 50 inch, 50 inch, 55 inch cut, sir. Yeah, move that, connect the lines. Boom. What the hell am I gonna do with that piece? Fortunately, I don't think the uh, the hinged lid is gonna be able to be three quarter inch. Well, maybe. Hmm. One thing at a time, Matthew. One thing at a time. Every time. Okay. All right, now we got our nine inch piece that we gotta cut here and just making sure, yep, diesel heater fits inside it. So there we go, just mostly for my brain, but as an illustration, cut. Okay, so that's essentially what that's gonna live, right? Once it gets all prettied up, and it's out actually 19 inches right now, because I just measured my fridge, and it's too close to 18. So if I sit here on the edge of the bed, and look, that's not so bad. Cabinetry here. Little poop apartment over here. We still have more room, I think, than we uh, than we did before. I think this is all coming out a little bit further, but maybe not. Um, either way, we're gonna avoid the obnoxiousness of drawers that pull into the living space, so that'll help. Um, so yeah, now it's either I trip this over in to get the paint, which is probably what I should do, just so I can start painting this because it it'll dry nice and quick. Uh, and then we got to build the framework. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So instead of the two by two frame being flush with this, I'm going to sink it down either half inch or three quarter inch so that the lid for the diesel heater, when it folds down, it's flush with this, you know, and then the two by two will still brace it. So it's the same theory that I'm just, the, the, the siding on the box is just going to be taller than the frame. Simple. What could possibly go wrong? I'm trying to forward think to what I am planning and do it before I sort of like build myself into a corner right there. All right, perfect. A nice little black line on our wall. Let's actually take this out and give it a little bit of a sand just to get rid of these rough edges. Plus we gotta let the fire burn down a little bit before we leave for Silverton. And bring this back here. Use the same sandpaper that I use to sand the paint. Hopefully, it does a good enough job. Better than it was. And it's all the prep we will do before painting it. See how this is doing. Oh, well, should probably, yikes, 10 to that. That's savage. I'm thinking gauze. I've actually had to use my first aid kit before, so I don't know what's gonna be left in there. Let's see. I put you in here, didn't I? Believe you all right? Be a good test to see if it's time to get a new one. Uh, what do we got in here? Got a giant ass gauze pad. 
I mean, that's silly to use that, isn't it? What else is in here? What is this? No. <laughs> yeah, this needs to be restocked or I need to buy a new one. Let's just use what we have then. Take too long. Bled right through that sucker. <laughs> I love horror movies. I love blood. I'm just not a big fan of it when it's coming out of me. I'm gonna go wash this off and rebandage myself. Then we'll go to Silverton. There, it's a little bit better. Gauze underneath there, band aids wrapped around it. How fortuitous! Mom and Dad are actually just about to step out the door and go to Silverton themselves. <laughs> Oddly enough, Dad was like, we're not going, we're going. We're going to the hardware store. <laughs> Where else is there to go in Silverton? Actually, we do have a nice little cafe there. And I should clearly give my thumb a break because it's probably all the moving around that caused the wound to go. <clears throat> Rip into Silverton, get what we need. What the hell do I need? Oh, spray paint. <laughs> so, mm. Make sure the fire is under control. Be out of here. Ooh, prime pickup location. Thank you. <laughs> huh. Oh, banner day. News in New Denver. The gas station's got a new sign. <laughs> That's the VR fuels. Look at it go. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It went up overnight. They're quite quick. Oh, oh look, Matthew. Oh, what? In there. Oh, perfect. Look at that little sticks and bricks. I guess it's really, really small. Right. It, well, you can tell that but I guess from the outside. Oh, Clarence was living there and Anna Marie, I think it was, was saying, I don't know how Clarence could live in there. That's so small. Everybody knows, <laughs> right? I mean, it would sure make it a lot easier for me to get to the hardware store when I needed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Hello, Katie. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fine, you oh. <laughs> It's a big day out in New Denver going into the Silverton Hardware Store. It's a family outing. It's a family outing. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh, it's a little bit more expensive than Canadian Tire. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Been looking at all of the uh, wood stains and whatnot. And oils and all this good stuff gonna have to seal up some uh some wood for penny's poop apartment for sure but that's a future matthew problem for sure for now i'm gonna do this we got the white spray paint and yeah, we're gonna try this see how it looks hopefully it's not too glossy what did you find oh yeah mm -hmm. i wonder who would like that who, who, who's taking her fish oh because i've got fish <laughs> that's kind of cute <laughs> There's a yellow one, but that's Toy Story. It's not as cool as Frozen. <laughs> uh, that's a cute little crib board. What do you got? That's what you get for Brooklyn. <laughs> for when that would take her lots of trips. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Chappies, right. Yeah, well, it's just, for a, it's just for a hinge that needs to be shortened. <laughs> Probably. All right, put these in the car. Hey, you go in there. Let's go have a coffee. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I 
All right, so I don't, I don't have, I don't have quote unquote enough two by two to make three pieces of 55 inch frame, but that's okay. So I'm thinking since the bottom at the back of the box, so not here, right? But what's close to the, the baseboard, it's not gonna work anyway, right? Because there's the fuel door in the way. Um, so I don't even think I'm gonna worry about a bottom back there and I'm just gonna screw the legs into the baseboard, use what we have in the van already. And then what we'll do is these two that I just cut to 55 inches, those will become the front and back top. And then on the bottom, I'll make these two shorter ones, which are almost 39 and a half inches each, uh, work for the bottom. And we'll just brace them in the middle on the inside of the box. That way we're not wasting wood. And more importantly, not going back to Silverton today, because I don't want to. Although, probably end up there tomorrow. Let's get serious. All right, just put another coat on a board over there. Now what we need to do is we'll grab one of the scrap pieces that just fell off. When I cut to 55 inches, we're going to grab a tape measure. And then, yeah, actually, hang on. Oh, a little bit more. We need the height of the box to be, well, nine inches minus three quarters. So eight and a quarter inches, right? So, think about this. Yeah, give me a second. Now we're gonna use the ruler, it's nice and flat. So we lay this guy on here. I just got these two sort of butted up against each other, right? In this formation. So if we want the height of this to be eight and a quarter, that means we gotta make a mark. <laughs> so it's flat unless it's balancing halfway. Get our pencil. And we've got flatten out our ruler. Huh. There we go. We've got eight and a quarter. Let's see. Right there, roughly, right? It's about eight and a quarter. Yeah, it's close enough. So now I can pull this down. And I can see where that lines up. Good Lord, we need to make seven and three quarters. I'm sure somebody faster at math could have done it and did it faster than me, but that's how I chose to do it. Seven and three quarter cuts. How many of those do I need? <sighs> A few, one, two, three, four at least. Five, six, seven, eight probably in total. Yes. <laughs> How many people just lost their minds screaming at me that it's not seven and three quarters and that it's in fact six and three quarters? I got it, everybody. Just calm down. Just reading it wrong. Just reading it wrong. Okay, so it looks like I'm further along than I actually am. <laughs> the bottom part is not attached. It's just there. And these aren't attached to each other. I was just putting them in there to figure out the distance that I need for the cross beams that will go. 14 and, oh gosh, why didn't I write it down? Three quarters, 14 and three quarters. And I just wanted to make sure that the diesel heater vent would fit in between, and it sure does. So, I'm good to go there. <sighs> Rick, I hate a bloody tip. Well, I just finished cutting those 14 and three quarter inch ends to push the box out for the correct measurement. Uh, and I thought I'd just double check this, and for those that might be interested, Oh, considering everybody's got an opinion oh, on where my diesel heater should go. Let me just see if I can, uh, there we go, see? So this is the pillar that's directly behind the driver's seat and I got room to make a hole there or even there if I so desire. That's where the actual gas comes into the tank that's over here in the middle-ish of the van. Remember I told somebody once there's more at the rear? Well, it is more at the rear, but it's also more in the middle. So there we go. So I'm thinking big old hole for diesel heater here. I better double check though, because there's actually way more room between those two. I just have to get my hole saw. <sighs> and test it. 
Okay, so I just got underneath the van with this guy. Definitely fits in that space. I took a little bit of a measurement, roughly from the pillar, seven inches. <sighs> but preferably we want it like here, right? As long as we're seven inches from the pillar. Ooh, this is where it's gonna get questionable though, because that goes right there. That's gonna be way too close to this side, I bet, for the air intake. So I better see how far I can push this way. I'm pretty sure this is the next beam down there. Oh boy. Fun times. Since I made these this way by putting a screw right through the top, right? And then some construction adhesive because of course, I can't very well put a beam here and then screw in this way. I mean, I could, I suppose, and I would miss the screw, but bleh. also I don't want to put it at the bottom because if I want the ducting to go through there, I'd rather it not have to come up. You know what I mean? So this is my, what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I got these brackets that I've had since we tore Lucky apart. I'm just sort of lining everything up and that's how I'm going to join these top beams on either end. We'll figure out what we're going to do for more structural integrity along the line. But first, L brackets. And I'm just sort of raiding my drawer of screws here to find the right length ones. These ones should work. So we got all those guys there. And then we're going to attach them here. So waste not, want not. That's a bloody nightmare. That's why we can't have nice things. Turns out I only had three of these, but I had those ones that I bought from Silverton Building Supplies a few videos back. So this side is going to be a little, a little bit more jank than that side, but that's okay. We don't mind. I already got that side attached there. I'm just going to do this. Ah, and then we'll get the opposite side on it. I had to bring it to the door. There wasn't enough room this way with all of the awkwardness. So one last one to do. Of course, it's behaving like wood, acting like it's not long enough. So we're gonna have to force it. First things first, get our construction adhesive. Actually, ooh, getting it all over me today. There should be enough excess here in the shop rags to just steal it from there. Nice. Okay. All right. Hold this out here. Ooh. Twist that like that. Sure. Why not? That should do. He says as he puts two more screws in. <laughs> Wipe it off. Wipe off the excess. All right, I don't really know if there's a back or a front or not, but we definitely have the free work for what will essentially be our kitchen cabinet. Here we go. There's not much to look at, but uh, looks pretty good to me. Unfortunately, it came at the sacrifice of the cleanliness of the house. But it's under renovation, so I can't really be too upset or surprised. I do recommend cleaning up your splooge as soon as you see it. Otherwise, it just becomes a real big pain in the butt later. But uh, been given enough time to solidify. It's kind of like that. You bastard. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I just had a thought. So I'm sitting here looking at all this, right? So, and this is why it's nice to be able to go a little bit slower, not just slap stuff together. And the fact that I'm, you know, building my entire structures from scratch. But if that's where the diesel heater is going to be, right? So it's great. It's going to have a little access hatch here. Perfect to get to to maintenance it. But sometimes when you're removing it, getting to those hose clamps that attach the exhaust and the air intake and the fuel line, sometimes they're harder to get at. And I, would want, I wouldn't want to, like kind of paint myself into a corner 
where I have to work on it this way, but I can't pull the whole unit out far enough, right? And then I gotta come in here and that would suck because of this. So maybe what I need to do now is make part of that white board we have out there removable. You know what I mean? But that's gonna make it so much harder to build on top of. Hmm. Well, I clearly got lots to think about. Unfortunately, it is starting to make its way through the gauze. <sighs> so, I think I'm gonna call it. It's getting a little later in the afternoon. I should go get washed up, probably clean this, and, uh, and go have some dinner. So, I'm gonna leave this one here. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you that clicks on my videos and watches all the shenanigans that I'm getting up to from the van build to the very soon to be camping season of 2024. Until the next one, everybody, just go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves. Most importantly, be positive, and remember, only dead fish go with the flow. Thank you.